Our next speaker will be Dr. Natasha Vitamore. She's an award-winning designer and author with scientific breakthrough in long-term uh, long memory. Dr. Vitamore is known as the first female philosopher of transhumanism by the New York Times. Regardless of hiding out in Scottsdale or being a full-time professor of ethics, she continues to be a media darling who is featured in the press and documentaries for her visionary ideas. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Natasha Vitamore. Thank you, that was lovely. What an articulate and eloquent introduction. Did you write that? Wow, I'm impressed. <laughs> Thank you. Transhuman code. Recently, I was looking through some press articles, and I always hunt for transhuman to see what's going to come up. And I noticed that one of my favorite events in the world is called Davos. And it's where people come from all over the world and talk about socioeconomic political issues and how to address them, what we can do to be a better humanity, more informed, better educated, and work together. Interestingly enough, a new project at Davos is called Transhuman Code. I thought, oh, that's interesting. Now let me take a look. What does that mean? Well, I know what transhuman means, and apparently you all do as well. Uh, but when I went to code, I thought, what do they mean by this? And a system of words, letters, figures, or other symbols uh, substituted for other words, letters especially, in the purpose of secrecy. Hmm, okay, well that would be computer code and encryption. So we all know what encryption is and security, but that's not the code that's being used here. A uh, systematic collection of laws and regulations. Well, transhuman is not specifically about laws and regulation. It's about becoming, being, evolving. Uh, covert into a particular code in order to convey a meaning. Well, not secret meaning. So I don't think code is the correct word, but I like it. It sounds good because we live in a computational world and computers are very familiar to us. My cybersecurity students would say, ah, oh, that's a misuse of terms. But I think it's kind of good. I like transhuman code because it's a message, a set of words, figure, figures, symbols, ideas. It's kind of like mimetic engineering. And those of us who come from the days of Marshall McLuhan know what mimetic engineering is. The medium is the message. So what message are we trying to put out there um, about the transhumanist perspective? And Newton gave an exceptional introduction to the concept, and then we followed up with uh, science fiction scenarios about artificial intelligence. Well, artificial intelligence is deeply involved in the transhuman agenda and has been since the very beginning. Marvin Minsky and um, John McCarthy, Ben Gertzel, many others are very embedded, encoded in the transhumanist agenda. Not only that, nanotechnology, which is not at the forefront right now, but will be soon, as soon as AI uh, becomes more molecular. So there we have Eric Drexler and Robert Friedis, early transhumanists who are still around and, and still pulling out their work. And then we have ideas about the brain. So what is the transhumanist brain? In my view, it's about decluttering your thoughts. Now, okay, so, the other aspect of it is ask it. Don't play dumb. Don't pretend you know everything if you don't. Just ask the questions. One thing that is very hard for people, myself included, to learn how to do is to say, I don't know. I don't know. Can you tell me? Ask a question. We all know no questions are too stupid. That's really the truth because probably someone sitting next to you or behind you wants to ask the same question. The other element of our thinking processes, which is very difficult to do, is to say, I need help. I don't know. Can you help me, please? And usually it's an act of kindness that will come and help you. And it's usually in our, our needs that we need help. You just simply do not know how to do something. And rather than going out and pretend that you know how to do it, just admit you don't know. If you had asked me 10 years ago, what's curriculum? Can you write it? Can you develop a syllabus? I would have said, no, I can't. Uh, yes, I have many different degrees, and I'm an academic. But at that time, 10 years ago, I did not know how to write a syllabus or curriculum. Now I'm an expert at it. It took training 
took skill, it took development, it took making mistakes, it took being corrected and going, oh, okay, thank you. It took asking questions. What do I put in the course code? What are the rules and regulations based on the HLC? The different governing bodies that tell you how to write curriculum and what accreditation means. So if you don't know science, just admit it. I don't know science. If you don't know about the technology, just admit it. That's fine, no one cares. But be careful about bragging about things you do not know because someone sitting next to you probably does know. Okay, so ask the question. In fact, a sign of intelligence is saying, could you tell me, what do you mean by that? I've never heard that word before. What does that acronym mean? Okay, all right, so how do I do the slides? Oh. I'm so embarrassed I asked how to do slides. Okay, just, thank you, okay, thank you. Okay, and keep on learning. And here, this is a symbol. Lately we've been talking about transhumanism and symbols. I walked by and it changed. Wow, okay, so this is a symbol for transhumanism I used in the early 1990s when I created a publication called Transhumanist Times. I put out news, and it's just a T, but does that look familiar, the shape? Entertainment tonight. <laughs> it was an infringement. I just borrowed the concept because I liked it and I did have it in a different red and I put the brain underneath it for the exclamation point. So I thought that was kind of clever. Okay, first, let's take a look about know your facts. This is so important for transhumanist thinking for all of us. Again, Jot down information, refer. You have your phones next to you 24 seven. Just Google it, find out. Don't trust Wikipedia, go down to the resources at the bottom of Wikipedia because those are the primary sources. Anyone can write on Wikipedia or any wiki and change things, and they do. So be careful about that. Know your facts, you can't know everything. One of my brothers is a uh, reconstructive surgeon. He helps people with deformities and uh, lose parts of their bodies, their faces, et cetera, and puts them back together. He knows nothing about nutrition, and he's the first to admit it. That's fine. But he does know about rhinoplasty. He does know about other medical procedures very well. He knows how to perform brain surgery. So if you know your area, that's great. Help other people learn about your area. But be careful about talking about areas you don't know about. One thing that drives our brain, our emotions, is our instinct. Now, there are several different types of instinct. Okay, let's take a look. Gap instinct, <coughs> negativity instinct, straight line instinct, destiny instinct. Okay, gap instinct. Binary group fallacy. So there's a gap in the thinking that causes this binary group fallacy in thinking. We'll take a look at that in a second. Negativity instinct, things are getting worse. How many times do you hear people in the news saying, uh, I mean, unemployment is rising, uh, the mar stock market, we're going to go into a recession, we're not going to live longer. Disease is on the rise, poverty is on the rise, global warming. Must what do you call it, land, or what do you call it, pilots here? What do you call when you make sure a, land, a plane doesn't take off? Yeah, what do you call it, you land, you? Ground, okay, ground a plane, thank you. The experts, pilots, okay. You ground a plane, you, you put a ship in, you know, what is it called, anyone? Dry dock, I used to be in the Merchant Marines. Dry dock is where you put a ship. You, you ground a plane, okay? So negativity instinct is really around us 24 seven and you have to not allow it to get you. Okay, straight line thinking, uh, linear thinking, this happened, so this is gonna happen, uh-huh, this happened in the past, this is gonna happen next, uh-huh, yeah, and the economists and the politicians and the doctors told us that this is the procedure that things happen along. Things happen like they happened in the past, not so. And it's also part of that straight line thinking is part of the, the hierarchy of thinking. That you have to be here to be the knowledgeable people and the people down here are not. Okay, destiny instinct. Innate traits determine our future. How many of you believe that? That our innate traits determine and define our destiny? Absolutely not. If you know what those traits are, you can stop them. If you don't know, they probably will, right? Dr. Rose, what do you think? Dear friend over here, I haven't seen in several years, but we uh, love you. Okay, all right. 
uh, UCLA, um, UCLA some years ago, he was on stage with uh, sunglasses, looking very sexy, very hot. On stage, and who was sitting next to him? Nobel Prize, who? Watson, Dr. Watson. Everyone know who Jim Watson is? Yes. Well, on stage with Jim Watson, Michael was there with his sunglasses on looking hotter than hell and it was incredible. Okay, find evidence. I have no evidence to prove this. However, I bet Gregory Stock does. Another very close friend of ours, Dr. Gregory Stock, put on the Conference of Life Extension at UCLA. What year was that? Mid 90s. Mid 90s. Big conference, great heroes attended. Find your evidence, look for the evidence. Now, mind you, evidence can change. Okay, this is very important. 10 years ago, you could be on a board of directors of a corporation and come up with an idea and not vote on it and put it out in, the, in your newsletter. People will believe that. And then say 10 years later, the board gets together and votes on a proposition, a motion, and it passes. And one board member says, oh no, we can't do that. 10 years ago, there was a newsletter that said this. What? Which is more evidentiary? A newsletter or a motion that's agreed to on a board? The motion that's agreed to on the board. So find your evidence. Newsletters can say a lot of things and often there are mistakes. So you have to be very careful about that. Nine times out of 10, there will be a mistake in just about everything you read, and even in scientific research. I will look through scientific papers reporting some breakthrough or semi-breakthrough or some modalities or methodologies used, some protocols to pull the research together, and I'll go look at that and go, wait, well, no, that wasn't the conclusion. So even in academics, we have to be careful because oftentimes universities need money so they're pushing their research papers to be published and they too can lack facts. So who knows? It's tough and we're in a tough place because we are on the cutting edge of life extension, of longevity, of wellness. And we don't even know if the facts that we're being told are accurate. So we've got to work doubly as hard. But the good news there is going to stretch our brains, right? Okay, so here are some mistakes. 1692, the Salem witch trials were based on a couple of girls who were mischief makers, to say the least. And they said that some women sounded really weird, that they thought that they were conspiring with the devil. So 200 people were killed because it was assumed that they were conspiring with the devil. 1977, Japanese Pokemon panic. 681 children ended up in hospital within a few hours of watching Pokemon. Okay, now, out of those large amount of children, only about a dozen of them actually did have a type of epileptic reaction to the lighting um, media style in that Pokemon game. So someone like me who gets vertigo and I have artificial lenses, I'm, I have artificial eyes because of uh, cataracts, I was going blind. So I can't see I, lights I have to stay away from. They will make me sway. But I'm the 10% of everyone who was going blind from cataracts. Most people had successful surgery, I did not. So not everyone who went into the hospital who watched Pokemon was sick. What do you call that, mass hysteria? Jimmy doesn't feel well. Well, I don't feel well either. Me too, you have that too, and this type of group think. Okay, 1998 um, MMR, mumps, um, measles, and rubella, that panic um, from vaccinations. We still are suffering from the backlash of that. Could vaccinations cause a problem? Yeah, they could. Do they? I don't know. Can it be proven? No. So the bigger issue that comes out of that misinformation is now a trending away from vaccinations. And so we're seeing certain diseases that we thought we had overcome now coming back. Very bad. And for those of us who are more of the mature citizens, <laughs> I don't want to get pneumonia. I don't want to get tuberculosis. I've already had measles twice. I don't want to get it again. But if you're like me who has the herpes virus, 
you have to be very careful. I have shingles. It's part of the herpes virus. Okay, it's, there's simplex one and simplex two. If you have shingles, like I do, you have to be very careful. Okay, case study. Now let's take a look at, so let's unpack this, because this is really important, and I don't think there's any other definitive example of BS that got instigated and put in the health, life extension, scientific, money-making, uh, entrepreneur, uh, angel investor domain than this, Theramos. Funded in, uh, founded, excuse me, in 2003, worth 10 billion in 2014. Okay, I'll repeat that, worth 10 billion in 2014. Wall Street Journal questioned the efficacy. How many of you don't know, and please admit it, it's okay, the, uh, what Theranos thre is? Okay, all right. Um, run by Elizabeth Holmes, a uh, dropout student from Stanford University. She got an idea, tall, blonde, blue eyes. Well, okay, since uh, most the first two talks were mostly men quotes, okay. Okay, Newton, get some women in your quotes. Okay, so the bottom line is that innately draws attention, okay? Now, that woman had an idea, and it was a very clever idea. Instead of having vials of blood taken out of your body through an, an IV, and having all those vials of blood go to the blood bank to find out, you know, your yearly test with your doctor, I can't see it. Okay, yearly test with your doctor. She would prick the end of your finger. She developed an invention, a machine that did it, advertising, etc. Okay, founders indicated of uh, she and her team were indicated of mass fraud by the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission. Is still in court in San Francisco. Bottom line, you never could do it. It was never invented. It was never created. Billions of dollars were invested in this fraud. So be careful. Look it up. Number three, my last point, use your brain to be you. This is something um, taking home. There is someone called Marie uh, Kondo, and I love this woman. Beautiful Asian woman who is the sweetest, most loving, uh, you just, you wanna hug her all the time. She decided she was gonna teach you how to organize your life. Start with your closet, throw all your clothes on the bed, and look at your clothes, pile, pile high, does this bring me joy? Yeah, I really, I feel good in this. Mm, doesn't bring me joy. Okay, bottom line, only have the clothes in your life that bring you joy. Next, I went to my closet, all my coats, my dresses, suits, went through, does it bring me joy? Through everything on my bed. Next, I went through my jewelry case. Next, I went in my study, through my paperwork. On and on, my kitchen counters, nothing on them anymore. Now I'm going through my brain. And I'm thinking, does this bring me joy? If it doesn't, you do not need it. Be you. Okay, case study, Greg Fay, who's not here, so I just wanna say he is one of the few, besides Mike here, Michael Rose, one of the few scientists who actually does have a scientific breakthrough, who actually does what he says he does. He is a known scientist, he is ethical, he's generous, and he has been my mentor in my own scientific research. Pay attention to him. Another person, Martin Rothblatt, entrepreneur, invented or created a serious radio. She has a company called um, United Therapeutics, very generous, benevolent, giving human being, also transhumanist, both of them. Pay attention to her. She is a no BS person. So the transhuman brain, ask questions. Find as much reliable evidence as you possibly can. If you need to go to mentors in science, go to Greg Fay or Mike Rose. If you need to find information in entrepreneurship, invention, innovation, go to Martine Rothblatt, okay? And if you want to be part of a group that really is in the academics, in education, that is the role of Humanity Plus. And we've been doing transhumanists through Extra Institute, through uh, World Transhumanist Association now. We all came together. Everyone put their political views aside. And we're all friends now, these years later. And Humanity Plus represents a diversity. 
So that is the good news. Now, we have something I'm just going to mention in closing. Thank you, Newton. There is a competition, a prize that we're awarding. It is a trailer for Humanity Plus with our logo, with some interesting sound, whatnot. And I'll talk to you about this later because I don't want to take time in the next speaker. But we are looking for high quality footage with a positive message to promote transhumanism. So the best vehicle we have to promote transhumanism is Humanity Plus. It is the world's largest transhumanist association. We have thousands of members, many chapters. Our newsletter goes to 30,000 people and it still grows. Not everyone clicks through everything. I check it <laughs> to be sure. But there are a lot. And there are students it's growing in academics, courses around the world. I, mean, I can't even tell you how many emails I get a week from students, uh, high school students, students in undergraduate school, students working on their masters, students working on their PhDs. Just this year alone, I have been quoted in 348 academic publications. And that's just for 2019 so far. And w thank you. When I got my PhD in life extension through the lens of transhumanism, I went through hell. So no, I had to write a paper criticizing everything I did. So that was one of my assignments. Um, so. I learned from it. There are many flaws with transhumanism. I've studied them. I've written about it. It's been published in academic, in ac several academic journals. So admit where you have problems, where you can improve, and you will improve. If you don't see it, if you have blinders onto it, you're not going to improve. So I love your brains. Keep them growing and learning. And remember, be you. And don't let anyone tell you to be something otherwise. Thank you. Thank you.